Hey what's good, I'm Sadia and in this video I'm going to show you how you can record any type of video that requires showing your face or your screen that you may want for reaction or tutorial videos, so let's go. So the first thing you want to do is download OBS, the open broadcaster software, by going to obsproject.com. It's a free download and it's available for Windows, Mac and Linux operating systems, so obviously select the one that you use and then follow the on-screen instructions to install it. I've already got it so I won't be doing this but once it's open, sorry once it's installed open it and then go to settings in the bottom right hand corner. There's not a lot that needs to be changed but you might want to tweak a few settings. Under general there's nothing that needs to be changed, you'll only need to amend the stream settings if you're planning on streaming. I won't be so I've left this setting untouched but if you're planning to stream then select the relevant platform and connect your account. Under output, the default settings are perfectly fine. The video bitrate and encoder are perfectly acceptable. The audio bitrate off 192 will get you that nice crisp audio. The setting that you might want to change here is the recording path, which is essentially where the OBS file will be saved whenever you finish recording. For the recording quality, you can choose what you feel is best. I personally stuck with indistinguishable quality large file size because it will give both a quality file with a reasonable size file as well. You can of course go with lossless quality which is way better but then you'll be sacrificing a lot of storage space which I think is pretty unnecessary. The recording format of MP4 is all good as it's the most compatible and the encoder can stay as it is. For audio I choose 48 for the sample rate and that's all you really need to amend here. For video everything can stay as is but of course if you want to adjust the resolution and the frames per second then go for it. Hotkeys are basically just shortcuts, so these will be down to personal preference. I'm going to skip this part. The final section is advanced, but again, nothing really needs to be changed here. So, now that we've got the settings out of the way, let's get you set up so you can start recording. First, create a scene and give it a relevant name. I'll go with reaction video for now. Now it's time to add some sources. Click the plus icon and select display capture, which will allow you to capture your display if the name didn't give it away. <laughs> give it a name and hit OK. If you're connected to an external monitor, then you'll need to choose the display that you want to capture under the display dropdown. I'm sticking to the built-in Mac screen as that's what I want captured. If you don't want your cursor to show when you're moving it around, then be sure to untick show cursor. For tutorial videos though, it might be quite useful to keep this on. Hit OK and now you should see the display you selected being displayed inside OBS. The red outline is basically the screen that's being captured. You may need to adjust the size if it's hanging outside the black box. To do this, just click the red circle in the corner and drag it to adjust the size. If you want it to appear full screen, then you need to make sure that it fits inside the black background perfectly. Next, turn off the mic here. Don't worry, we'll get into recording your voice in a bit. So for reaction videos, it will make sense to capture the audio of the video that you're reacting to, so you'll need to add another source. Select audio output capture, give it a name, hit OK, and then choose your device. I've got the Black Hole 2 channel plugin installed as I'm going to be connecting to an external mic later. Link to this free plugin is in the description below. Once you've installed it, be sure to change your speaker setting to multi-output device. Cool, so let's test that this works before we continue. I'm going to play a YouTube video. As you can see, the audio level here is moving, so we know that the audio of the YouTube video is being captured correctly. All good. So you can adjust the volume of it by dragging the slider left or right accordingly, just to ensure that the audio level doesn't hit the red line. Alright, so on to recording your voice. Add another source, but this time select audio input capture, give it a name, hit OK and select the built-in microphone. Don't worry, I'll be going over how to connect an external mic shortly. As I speak, you can see that the audio levels move, so it's working, but let's hit start recording just to properly test it out. Okay, stop recording and let's play back the video. So as you can see, the YouTube audio is being captured, but you can also hear my voice, which is coming through the built-in mic. Perfect, so that's working nicely. So we've got the screen capture, the video audio, and the internal mic. What's next is recording yourself. Go ahead and add another source, selecting video capture device this time, and select the camera that you wish to use. I'm going to use my Logitech camera rather than the built-in Mac one. Amend the preset if you want, and as I mentioned earlier, you can adjust the size by clicking and dragging the red circle. Click and drag the center of it to move its position. And remember, what you see on screen at this point is essentially how your reaction or tutorial video is going to look, so adjust it exactly how you want it to appear in the recording. Okay, so now let's get into using an external mic. 
add a new source, choose audio input capture, and make sure your external mic is connected so you can select it. Hit OK and it should appear under the audio mixer. Adjust the volume of the video you're reacting to so that it doesn't overpower your external mic. Oh, and don't forget to remove the internal mic you added as a source before. You can simply click the eye icon to effectively turn it off or remove it entirely. And to remove it, just right click it and hit remove. Easy. Oh, and if you want to add a background, that's easy enough. Select the image when adding a source and choose the file that you want and then just amend the size as you wish. You can change the order of your sources by clicking and dragging up or down. You probably need to do this if your image isn't visible because it's below the screen capture, like so. And there you have it. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, be sure to hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this. As always, thank you for watching. Peace.